Good morning, everybody. Hello, how are you? Good air of Shabbos. This is Naomi Nachman on the Nachum Siegel Network, and you are listening to Table for Two. We are right here on the Lower East Sides, getting a little bit nippy. I cannot believe it is the fall, and we are in our full swing into season seven. I was about to say eight, but don't rush it, Naomi. Don't rush it. Slowly enjoy the moments. For those of you who bet. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Naomi Nachman. I'm about all the food, all the time. I love food. I love shopping for it, cooking it, eating at restaurants, anything food related. I'm a kosher personal chef. I'm a cookbook author. Oh, second book coming out in two weeks. Um, anytime you don't feel like cooking, you can give me a call. I hope you'll tune in every week to hear about my cooking adventures, kosher food traveling, and sharing of great food ideas and recipes. But I want to hear about your experiences too. So Naomi, you can email me at naomi at nachamsegal.com. Um, Yoni is actually getting my email address up and running because I had some issues with it. So if I didn't respond, I'm sorry. I will uh, get get on it right away. And um, you can also DM me through Naomi Nachman on Instagram. Okay, guys. So we had an incredible lineup last week. I just want to say that I was totally starstruck by Rachel Goldzell. <laughs> I'm like, I look at her and I'm like, oh my God, she went chopped. She was so cool. So proud. 13 years old at 12 at the time when she did her chopped. And I was like, wow, very confident, well-spoken. Make sure you check out last week's show. You should check out all the shows on our app, on our YouTube channel, on our website. We're everywhere. Um, yes, yeah, so we had a great show. And, of course, we had Melinda Strauss from Jewish Food Media Conference. I always call it Jewish Food Bloggers, but Jewish Food Media. I mix up the two names, between the old name and the new name. Um so we had her in talking about her conference coming up in just a couple of weeks. Hopefully you got your tickets because they are selling out fast. And, of course, to my book launch. Hope you're all coming. It's at Great Falls Bistro at Factory 220. The Nacham Siegel Network crew is going to be there. We can't wait to see everyone there. Um, you're going to get a book. that When you walk, for the, when there's a ticket and you get a book and you get a swag bag with a book in the side filled with swag and a whole small plates dinner. You will not be disappointed. More than a $75 value that the ticket costs. <gasps> Okay, little shout out for my book launch. Okay, um, so much going on in the food world now. It is the, I call it the trifecta. You know, we've got Jewish Food Media Conference. We've got a book launch. This year there's no kosher feast, so we're doing the book launch instead of kosher feast. And we have just worked out that way. I saw an empty slot and I grabbed it. Um, and we have Kosher Fest, one of my favorite events. I've been going to Kosher Fest. I wish I knew, but it's definitely more than 20 years because I'm living in Woodmere for 15 and I've been for about five or six years while I lived on the Lower East Side, so it might be over tw 20 years. But I'm going in attendance. I'm going in attendance maybe what, 21, 22 years straight. I've never missed one. Um, sometimes I go one day, some, mostly I go for two because I love to network. Um, so I'm really excited to have that. But there's, that's coming up the next couple of weeks. We're going to have in the, we have in the studio today to talk about all the fun foodie events and what is going on in their lives right now with a brand new magazine coming out along with a hoopla of all the exciting food events. We have a new magazine that's coming out done by the super talented team of Shifra and Shlomo Klein uh, who did Batavon, Joy of Kosher and now Flashik. So they're going to be joining us in one minute and also Alain Kornblum. There is no one better to talk about food and restaurants than Alain. He has eaten at more restaurants than me. I may have eaten more far-reaching places, but he has eaten at more restaurants. So we're going to welcome them both into the set today. So uh, Shifra Shlomo, how are you? We're great. It's really great to be here. Tired. Tired. <laughs> it's like having a newborn doing a book, right? Yes, that's what it is. And Should we get Elon soon to chime in on what it's like printing? No, no The more. three of us, actually. No right, more. we've all The three printed. of us, we've all gone to printing. Yes. Yes. It is the People most stressful see thing. see the back end of printing. Shlomo, you look as tired. Glad. It's not you as glamorous as uh, everything seems on social media. Right. You, you look but it's awesome. tired. It is awesome. It's it's amazing. Yes, it's really fun. I feel like your chair is loud. Passionate about what? Is, are you okay in that chair? Yeah, I'm totally okay. All right, I feel like so it's no. Like we're really excited. We, we if I try to hire it, I'm just gonna fall. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll stick little it technical together. issue here. Okay, no, I'm good. Um, yeah, so tell us about the whole concept. Walk us through the timeline of this book because jo Joy of Kosher Magazine kind of. So Joy of Kosher Magazine transitioned into seasonal cookbooks. Um, we started with um, oh, what, the brisket Jamie? book. Yeah, Jamie. Right. Jamie that's was right. talking about it on the show from Yerushalayim. That's right. And so we transitioned into these like sort of seasonal books that 
it's like sort of a magazine taken up 10 notches where you um, have like a guide for that season or for on a certain topic. So um, Jamie recently printed um, a brisket book. The the baking book is going to be released soon. Yeah, that's exciting. So that's very, yeah, it's very exciting, um, and it's available on Amazon. So it's um, pretty much a regular cookbook, soft cover. Right. But it's also it's about 150 pages, packed with recipes and information. And for those that are asking, we are still working on it. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> so yeah, we're still. Is Laura um, is still what working with the team? Laura does help uh, occasionally. Okay, nice. Yeah. And Tamara but I is see, still there. Yeah, Tamara is still there. Um, and then the Jacksonville team. There's some people there as the well. Florida yes, kitchen. the Florida they don't kitchen. Like to be referred to as the Jacksonville. Oh, the, the Florida, Florida kitchen. The Florida <gasps> test kitchen. Oh, okay. I'm going to Florida next week. This week, I don't even know what week That's I'm amazing. in. When this airs, I don't know where I'll be. I might be in Florida while this airs. I'm not sure. Yes, I will be in Florida as this airs. So Florida is awesome, by the way. <laughs> Giving it a shout out. Going to eat my way through Florida, by the way. Food crawl, Ilan. I wish you could join us. Zalmi's organizing December, it. December. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to do the pre one. Do you want me to scout out where you, you need me to go? Zalmi can organize it. You know which one I'm talking about. Zalmi Cohen. Come Zalmi on, Cohen. Zalmi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's best. Yeah. Best. We did a great one last year. We're going to do one this year. Okay. So um, we're we love magazines. We love the idea of like seasonal, you know, printing recipe stories, tips and tricks that have to do with that time period. And so we really wanted to. Um, you know, go ahead and continue someone gave with us the passion. idea, and like we just thought about it, and we like, yeah, why not? Let's do it. But why? Yeah. Why is it called Flashix? What happened oh. to Milchix? That's fifty so, percent of what we eat. Actually, for me, it's seventy-five percent what I eat. One of the one second, like. One second, Nomi. What do I eat for breakfast every day? Cheesecake. Okay, and I have a cup of milk. But I'll where- have I'll have roasted chicken. So like I could really be, I'm like auth- an authentic representation of Flashix. And I am as the a- most non-authentic <laughs> representation of Flashix. Um, although I do enjoy Flashix. The right. idea of yeah. the magazine was really to like think about something and to specialize in something that isn't available to the kosher consumer. Um, there's so much on milk. Like, like even there's that, ve- I mean, I'll give a shout out. There's vegetarian magazine. There's tons of recipes out there. And we felt that we would have a stronger voice if we specialize in a specific topic. And the most, um, I think the topic that's, that has so much left to be discovered is meat. I, I totally so, agree. Like literally I have to tell you when I'm planning the magazine and you could ask Shlaimi, um, and everyone that works for us, I'm constantly editing things out because I'm like, there's so much to put in. There's so much to share. Yeah, you always ask how you're going to keep it's doing issues. Endless. And it's endless. Works. It's endless. So we're very excited about it. Um, it's it's genius. Can I say? I think you. this is genius. Yeah. And so it's like a, one of the... flip side to it. Milk. No, not the, no, not the milk. <laughs> actually had it. The flip asking, side to Flashix is milk. It's milk. Like that's the right. Oh, so people are... Uh, Ah. A new series. Okay. So the vegan, ask, the you kosher vegan. Are you going to do a milkshake issue? And I'm always like, oh, maybe we will. We have this Should debate. Like, Call I'm it like, no. Flashics, the, the milkshake the edition. No, not Flashics. Hashtag not Flashics. We're really sticking to our We're brand. Really to our brand. Um, even even Shvuas, though, like people eat milkshake for like a meal or two, but it's not just milkshake. Anyway, our Shvuas issue is going to be, um, I'll, give, I'll give a secret. Our Shvuas issue is going to be focused on uh, power of baking. Oh, So there's okay. going to be like our pastry issue. Obviously, there's going to be Flashic stuff in it, but it's going to be a focus on, like, pastry. Um, so we're very excited about that but as well. But not disgusting but power like, for pastry. There are so many questions. Like, when you walk into the butcher department, especially as a kosher consumer, there's so much confusion. Like, with the names of the meat, if you're going to shop in Brooklyn and you shop in Long Island and you shop in L.A. or you shop in Florida, everything is called different things. I had How that, do you distinguish between the roads? I had the hugest issue with my cookbook. Okay. What happened? So I was ordering some meat from Naftali Hanau from okay. Grand Behold. Um, I said, I need a brick roast. Yes. He goes, <laughs> we know that. that's a French roast. I'm yes. like, no. In the five towns, in the amazing Gourmet Glat, which we all love. Yes, we do. Gourmet Glat sells Gourmet French is roast. official sponsor of the Glacier's Kitchen. Oh, I love that. Shout out to you, Gourmet Glat. I love Gourmet Glat. Yeah. You know what i got to say? I go to a lot of supermarkets around the world, and Gourmet Glat is the cleanest. Yoli it's also has really the good floor. customer service. Great customer yeah. service, and the floors are clean. They and clean them. Talking about meat, I mean, between Yoshua and Yona and Beryl. And that's just in Cedarhurst. Like what we, about Ilan? mobbing them, and I, they just they handle everyone. Ilan in Woodmere? 
Ilana, Ilana and Woodmere. Woodmere cannot leave Ilan out. I'm giving you a shout out, Ilan. I make him crazy because it's near so my house. I'm about always the roasts, there. like how there's this confusion. Right. So, yeah. so how do I, in my book, will say a French roast. That's right. But to someone else, that's a different roast. People don't know the names. How yes. are we going to do? Like, so or that's... Denver steak and New York strip steak. That's right. They're the only ones that have a Denver steak. Right. And behold, but then but, it's the New York not... strip steak and others. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll give you the option. I'll say both. <laughs> Because I've learned. Like we just had now, we're doing already for our next issue, I think it is. We're working on the Chuck Eye. Yes. So here in Five Towns, it's Chuck Eye. It's a California roast. And in Brooklyn, it's a Domonico. Really? Yeah. Isn't Domonico kind of like a fancy cut? It's a fancy cut. It's so when it, says, when it says really? Domonico, it makes you buy the Chuck Eye. But you know what? If you see the way we cooked it and sliced it, you would, think, you would think it's a prime rib. <sighs> okay. When that's, so we, that's what I'm coming over for the next photo oh, shoot. Oh, totally. Totally. <laughs> Um, and basically that's the idea, like demystify and like help someone walk into a butchery with confidence. And like you were saying, like you were saying with the brick roast, the French roast. So that's what inspired our first article we're doing on, um, London broil in the first issue of the magazine. And it basically like explains the different cuts of London broil and the best way to cook each type of London broil, even though the idea of London broil is to broil it. If you're going to do a shoulder, you know this, if you're going to do a shoulder or you're going to do the classic London broil, you can't cook it the same way. When we no ask way. you what you a can't. London broil is, what's your answer? I don't even know. There you go. I don't so, even know what so cut it is. I did cuts. once ask Bosch and it's he not told a specific me. specific cut. I once That's did why. a sous vide, the one and only time I sous vide, <laughs> is I did a, a, a London shoulder. broil. Shoulder yes. London broil. Shoulder London broil. I do, I get it from Gourmet Glatt or from... Nice uniform Costco. thick piece of meat. Sometimes I get it at Costco. Yes. Um, but it's a very different cut than when I get it from Naftali well, exactly. and Anna from Grand Behold. Yes. So I sous vide it and then I had to sear it and it was uh, it was okay. So it's I like that particular cut of meat when it's just barbecued. Like grilled on, on a grill. Yes, pan. there is something about grilling it that's just amazing. But um, otherwise it's not the high end cut of meat. No, not at all. Not at all. And there's shoulder cut and yes. there's thin the shoulder cut. The one is the one that, that does best with sous vide. Yeah. It's so good to be. You see it, you oh. it and it's that was you I, saw our cover options. That one with the blue background. That's the shoulder on the roll. Okay, good to know. But, yeah. So yeah. So, so one that's of the, one of the one of the sorry about that. One of the the perks of going with this going with this uh, direction <laughs> is that um, because we're more meat centric, it actually ends up being um, more male focused, if you want to call it that. No, a it guys magazine. Appeals. It basically it appeals, appeals to guys. To, yeah. It's not a guys no, magazine. It's not. But more guys will be interested. The magazine is I for hear that. Cooking, anyone who's in the who's kitchen. Most magazines are for women. Yeah, in the oh. uh, yeah. No, most magazines are geared towards women, so this kind of gets both. Yeah, anyone. That it's hears basically the name, anyone like, oh, that men. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like, it's for anyone who wants to cook, who likes to cook and spend time in the kitchen. Um, and there's definitely other recipes besides meat. We had such an interesting comment where somebody who was um, very concerned about health said that um our magazine isn't um isn't you know in touch with like health or whatever um but the truth is just because it's called fleshic we're not like you know frying um steak in, in a deep fryer with olive oil right <laughs> we're yeah. like there's a lot of salads and healthy options our first our first issue has this whole article about knife cuts so we're giving What's people a knife like cut? What do you mean knife, by that? Basically, we have like this section in the magazine okay. that's called Culinary School. And like in each issue, we're doing different skills in the kitchen. Oh, so I our like first, that. yeah. So basically, we're we're thinking beyond. It's a chef, it's a um, sa um, chef Sandy Leibowitz of Plantains and Chala did the article. Did she okay. change her name? Um, she changed to Plantains and Chala. She used to be Kosher Tomato, tomato yeah. or something. So but what is she now? Plantains and Chala. Plantains and challah. Yeah, because she has that like, like me and you calling it tomato tomatoes, getting a little bit confusing. Confusing. Well, there is there is tomato <laughs> tomato, tomato <laughs> because she's oh I'm yeah. she's American and he's British, so they made it together. They're a cute little couple on Instagram. Oh, Make cute. sure you follow them. Tomato tomato. You have to look up how to spell. I like that. That's cute. That's yeah, they're, cute they're adorable. Oh, so Hopefully they'll this, be at my book knife launch. Article. And so, like, in that we have, yes, that's the educational piece. And we're thinking, like, just beyond giving people a bunch of recipes. Like, I say in the beginning of the magazine, like, today you could just, like, you know, Google in two seconds. Like, a list of recipes will come your way. You go on Instagram. There's amazing um, talent out there yeah, sharing yeah, recipes. Cookbooks, amazing cookbooks. Yes. Out there. Ah, that's right. Pesach, that's right. Ones that are perfect for just, like, any time. 
<laughs> or flavors, perfect flavors. Or perfect for Pesach, or they're perfect flavors. Right. Exactly, they're just perfect. Yeah, just perfect. So yeah, we're thinking beyond just sharing recipes. It's more like coming away with like really cool information, very relevant information, and interesting. So in the knife class, we do a poke bowl, which is also pretty like healthy. Because you fish. know what poke means? Do you guys know what poke means? What does poke mean? Cubes. Cut up, cut up pieces, okay. and literally, literally, cool. that's what it means in Hawaiian. So. You're talking about knife skills. Poke is a perfect thing to practice exactly. a knife skill on. Exactly. That was the point of that. That's why we chose poke. Um, it was like, use your knife skills. So basically, like, there's an array of recipes. It's obviously very meat-centric, but there's so much, so many other things. Um, and then Maki Gordon Hirsch made from Kiss the... Um, oh, I from, love um, Maki. She made us, she made us the number cake. You know those number cakes? I ca- I I know I want one so, so bad. Have you what? ever had one? these? No. Hers are so delicious. And we actually had the recipe and I myself who am not I'm not like this huge baker, I was able to make it. Really? Yeah. So like she, whoever she wants to try the recipe, when yeah. The, the picture, like, like what's, what's the F? F? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As long as it didn't have anything else afterwards, you're okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's oh, my flesh-like. God. I love it. So it's it. delicious. It's such a good cake. The recipe's in the magazine. So and, her number um, cake's in the magazine? Yes. So this is one of the things where with Mal- that Malky's cake, I would totally love to have the recipe and have Malky make it. Right. That's what people do to me. Okay? Yeah. I'm a, I, people have people go, can you make me ribs for Shabbos and I'll, you know, my personal chef business. I'm like, a lot of my recipes are now actually in like the first book, Perfect for Pesach. I'm like, you've got the book. Can't you make it yourself? And they're like, no, 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 no. We want your recipe, but we want you to make it. That's I'm right. like, that's good. But getting back to the, the idea of, you know, more interesting stories and uh, like information, we went down to Allenby. People know about Allenby, or at least some people do. Oh, if you don't live on planet Earth, idea. let's let's catch them up. Okay. If you don't live on planet Earth and you've just landed, no, I'm not being so, I'm not being <laughs> mean. But no, so it, we have new listeners tuning in all the time. People from the out of New York that might not be familiar with it. Let's tell them what Allenby is. Let Elon tell us what Allenby yeah, is. Elon, of course. Um, it's a modern, is you know, twist on Israeli cuisine. Um, a lot of interesting ingredients. I almost like Pardis, kind of with Israel. Um, just. He has a deconstructed falafel, which is well, very well known. Um, just a really interesting event, especially in Tel Aviv. There's a lot of uh, modern uh, cuisine that's happening. So he kind of took that and brought that to Crown Heights. And it's doing yeah, amazing. Really and his wife is Australian, Adina Schlass. Oh, and <coughs> I'm just, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, wife. the chef's wife with a bunch of underscores in between there. Uh, she's from Sydney, so we're hometown girls. Um, and she did a lot of um, boards for my book. Oh, very cool. I yeah. can't she's see that. She's the sous vide and puree queen. She's and amazing. Boards. Yeah, she's very and talented. Meatballs and cheese balls, but I love her work. I yeah. love her work. And she's clean she eating. Yeah. So anyways, we went down there, but Schiffer wanted to come up with something a little bit different. And she spoke to Judah, and they did a behind the scenes. It's actually fascinating to see what goes on in a restaurant from 9 o'clock in the morning when everyone comes until service. You know, we all come and we see... Menu, we sit down, we start complaining, and we're upset about how long it's taking. <laughs> so what about all the work that goes We'll talk about it? that, Ilan. <laughs> Where is that? At Allenby. At Allenby. Okay, so, in no, the magazine, we did in the an magazine. article. I would love to see that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, called, it's called The Art of Fine Dining, and we write how, like, you know, the, the let's say you want, you're going to the restaurant on Monday, your service and the food really starts, like, Sunday night when the restaurant shuts down, from that point until 5 o'clock when you walk in, what happens? Like what's happening in the restaurant, plus the chef generously shared his Arias recipe, and that's in the magazine. What's Arias here? Arias Arias, is a stuffed lamb lamb pizza. pizza. It is amazing. I've had everything on their menu. Well, I haven't been there in a while. So could you miss it? Because they have a seasonal menu. I love love seasonal menus. I might go tomorrow early to have it also. So good. My son my son ate it. He said it was the best supper I ever made him in his life. Uh, and her um, kids are foodies. They're I real know foodies. her kids are foodies. Yes, yes. So it was, he's 13. So that was a real compliment. One interesting thing um, I saw from, from that article was like, people don't realize that a restaurant is open 24 hours. Yeah. 11 o'clock at night when they're breaking it all down. Um, he has a whole cleaning crew coming. Right. They're cleaning a whole night. When the cleaning crew leaves in the morning, there's already a bunch of staff coming in the morning. It's like, it's nonstop. It's pretty It's nonstop. It's not the as restaurant, glorious yeah. as everyone thinks it is. Yeah, the restaurant business it's is tough. business. Tough. I know tough people business. say to me all the time, I open a restaurant, I'm like, yeah. no mm-hmm. way. Uh-uh. Yeah. Not no. about the cooking. No, it's not at all. It's a lot more of the logistics, yeah. the business aspects, you know? That's why a lot of chefs who, a lot of chefs don't mind giving away their recipe. Like you were saying, 
your recipes in the book, but people still want you to come cook it. Right. You know, I still want to go out to eat. You know, it's fine if the chef shares a recipe or two with me. That's not the crux of the business. Right. It's I like wonder if more... those restaurant recipe books do well, like the La Marae one or the grill, grill, what's it called? The, the Prime Grill. The Prime Grill, one, David the Secret Recipes. The Secret Restaurant Recipes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's fun. Right. So, you know, do those books sell well? People. You know? Um, Right, no. Maybe she could get Dali on the phone. Oh, right. <laughs> That's funny, right? No, but like, uh, no, from a single restaurant, like a whole book on other restaurants. Right. Like, sometimes they're like so complicated. You have to make a just, and like, how do you make a just? And you have to make right. the veal stock. And I'm like, I'm just going to go to the yeah, restaurant. Yeah, we'll just, we'll, we'll just, just go to the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. You know, it becomes a lot more. We're not making a three day sauce here at home. Yeah, right? Which no. quite often can be. So, you know. But we, we like- also covered a few other things. I mean, we have Michael Salmon of in this issue. Right. We're in our in our cookbook. Has, I love he him. He has a new cookbook. His yeah. cookbook is really cool. Um, so we, we spoke to I haven't seen the new one yet. It's, it's, it's not out, out yet. yet. It's not it just out yet. Came out. It just came out. Don't forget your friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's amazing, Michael yes. Salmanoff. Um, I went with Honey Applebaum to hear him. Yeah, his it's other kosher. book also is for, his first book was kosher. His book was like pretty much kosher. And I, it was funny because I had when I did the cookbook review for Joy of Kosher, I had written it's kosher. And then I got a lot of pushback because there were like one or two things where he like leg of lamb, like yeah, he he wrote a cut that wasn't kosher, or he had said saute butter and onions and then put liver in something. But that was like pretty much it, right? An option. He said something about like using non like non dairy. Uh, yeah, butters, yeah. So, but like it was... so 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 I did get you know you have to be careful when you say something is fully kosher. Right, right. But I think this one really is. Everybody's looking. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But this another, one really another big is. Big change we're doing from last time is that. Um, Six times a year, we're doing it monthly. There's going to be 11 issues a year. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. Get some sleep on Shabbos. Yeah, we're going to sleep on Shabbos. The only, the only month that won't have an issue is between Pesach and Shavuos because it's just so tight. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have a what do we like call a double it? issue. A double issue. Yeah. Oh, I like and that. That's actually very clever. Yeah. Yeah. That's very clever. The fr- you know, I like in some of the other magazines, I have it this way and then that way, and you flip it over. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Yeah, that's good a good idea. idea. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll get credit for that. Okay, we will. Well, we're going to have to... flip it over, then we could put milk Yeah. Aha, uh-huh, uh-huh. getting his cheesecake in the magazine. Okay. <laughs> and wait, put like a mechitza in the middle, like a that's big, it. fat, thick page in the middle. Yeah, that's right. It's so and, exciting. Um, and what, what a really cool idea that we're doing that we're really excited about, so it's really fun to actually follow us on social. Um, follow them, Flayshix. Um, Flayshix Mag. Mag on Instagram. Flayshix Mag Twitter. and also Batel Von. You should also keep following them because yes. they are hilarious. <laughs> Thank you. The whole um, family gets involved. And so, yeah. So basically we're doing like um, a little bit of live coverage of articles. So for mean? instance, in this past, in the Hanukkah issue, which is coming up in a few weeks, we're, we we decided to cover the Musket Club, which is a new dinner club, supper club situation the where they do like, to. yes, where, where they do like I'm seven sorry, I was, to I was 10 in to Israel. 11 years. Yes, you're excused. You're excused. <laughs> so they make these really cool dinners. They could come to your home, to an event space. Um, and so we were doing a story on them. And then they, they have they're this. Co- like, they're a kosher group? Yes, they're kosher. They come to cook in your and house. And they come they, and cook. They yeah. They and gourmet glad they got the stuff. Okay. And so, we're, already, we're already cooking. We're already shooting. We had exactly. the whole photography team. So we kind of. So we're like, on why the not the wall. invite people over and actually live stream the article? So we had our photographer in the kitchen. He was taking photos of each dish. The, and we were we had the writer Nomi Ross did the did the writing because she's Isn't so talented. Isn't she so talented? She's amazing. she's amazing. So she was there and she was like taking notes because we're featuring some of the recipes. And then we had a bunch of our friends sitting in the dining room eating the food and also covering it. We're doing the same thing. Um, we did the same can, thing this past. Um, can, I need to write down a date for the next one. Yes, and then what we did, we did a vertical. Uh, we're doing an article on dry oh, the, aged meats. A vertical. What is aged dry aged steak meat? tasting? Yeah. That that is uh, Elon will be there. What, what, when is that? That is coming up this Monday. Vertical. You said you could not make it. Is that but at the ridge? Give your, your is listeners. that the ridge? The ridge, yeah. The ridge. So we're Check. doing an yeah, it's really cool. We're doing an article like people always want to know like when you come to a restaurant and it says dry aged meat, what is that? So we're we're doing a whole article about it. Is it worth it? Who it's worth it for? How many days you could age meat for? So we're doing a tasting, and so instead of just keeping it behind closed doors, we're inviting tons of people to come. And we're having our writers there, and the photographer, and people. So I it's really need exciting. To, to expand on this a little bit. If yes, you go, go to res- you go to you know the top place you're You go to res- Doma. You go to Doma. Go to any of these places. Let's say aged. It's usually. I'm not going to say always. It's usually 14 to 30 days aged. What does age mean? Just Dry tell. Dry aged. They have a special room. It's controlled temperature. 
so no bacteria, no bad bacteria can grow on the meat. And what that does is it actually breaks down the meat, it gets rid of all the moisture, and it gives you a much beefier, um, beefier flavor and more concentrated texture. flavor. Concentrated uh, flavor and and also, it's almost like when you go past sixty days of oh, age, that's what we get into. It's almost like the blue cheese of steak. It so, gets yeah. funky. So the restaurants so are pretty much that's, in 14 nobody, to 30 nobody days. Nobody typically does beyond 60 because this, it's too much for the average. Um, I would want to try it. It's though. fun to I try it. You had a 90? You had a 90? Ridge. And it how was, was it? Very nutty. Very nutty. Not, See, no, yeah, nutty is not, an understatement. That, yes. <laughs> that, that, he's being very really polite. Interesting. It's interesting. Is it uh, disgusting? No, no, no. I like it. You have small to like doses. small doses. It's also we people who like... People who like blue cheese, people who like a little bit more funkiness. But this is, we're talking about like 60 plus aged steak. No, so what we're actually going to do, we're going to have a, a non-aged, we're going to have a 30 day, a 60 day, 90 day, and I, 150 day. I don't oh. want to hit. Now you're going to take each one I as the same cut, from... prepare the same way. Uh -huh. So you'll be able to see you'll the difference You'll be able to really taste. <sighs> for the average consumer, cool. like for the average restaurant, um, you know, diner, it's fun to try like a 30 to 45 age day steak. That's where you're going to taste the difference, but it's not going to be too much. So that's that's what I would recommend to somebody who's going out to eat. A 15 aged a 15 day age steak, you don't taste the age so much. What do you think you want about that? Yeah, again, no, it's, 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 it's is it, is you it, don't get the taste. It's, uh, texturally, I think it's a little bit better. Maybe, yeah. And don't try it at home. Don't like leave your steak out oh. for 15 days <laughs> on no, no. the counter. It will walk away by itself and you'll <laughs> yeah. smell well, your they, house actually, out. <laughs> they've been working this for Shire from, from, from the yeah. ridge. It's actually a, a landsman. He's from Cape Town originally. Ah. I went to his wedding last week. Uh, yeah, I went also. I didn't see you there. I was early. Oh, I came later. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I got, I got there on time. <laughs> waited two hours for everyone to come out. What? What? Is Hasidish? Um, no, he's Chabad. He's Chabad. They also didn't stand on time? Sorry? They also didn't start on time, but just a half between Chabad pictures. Time? Have you ever heard of Chabad time? Yeah, no, 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 no. It did I, start. There's Chabad time. There's also um, also Hasidic time, no time, they don't have a watch, and Sfari. Sfari, no watch. I'm like Yeki through and through, so I live by my yeah, yeah. seconds on my watch. But anyway, so he, he actually just got married. He's a young guy. He's actually, he was managing the restaurant, and then along with a partner, they went and bought it. They renovated uh, what's it, two stores down. Yeah, and they're doing a great job. But one of the things they're doing is they're making an aging program. Like they have a full aging room, and if you think about it, if you do, if you're aging steaks for 100, if you're aging steaks for 150 days, so the planning in advance. I mean that you got one one rib roast. So you're talking about a couple hundred dollars. You got a lot of waste, and then that can go in one night. So you really got to plan and have it like worked out. You have to have a system in place. And they've been working on this for a, for a while. This is amazing. I, I'm a big meat eater. So this magazine no, so this, speaks to me, this aged meat. My dad used to get aged meat. I, I know what it is because my dad did in the 80s in Australia. That's amazing. His butcher would do it for him. Wow. You know, I, it, there's nothing better than an aged steak. Um, if any of you have seen the... Uh, Follow Doma on Instagram or been to the restaurant. When you walk in, they have that oh, beautiful... So awesome. um, tomahawk steak hanging in their aging room like which is at the front of the restaurant have you ever actually we were, we were there recently we actually looked at the different steaks you can actually see the difference you see some of them have just been put in i mean usually you do a full they rack, shrivel but even when they cut them you can actually see some are like more pale red and some are more like a deep red you can actually see how long you can see it's been longer you don't know how long it's like wine a late harvest riesling is going to have a completely really different flavor this that was something that was picked early on in the harvest because it, it gets to age and get all the flavors going. It's fun, play, you know, it's playing with uh, God basically, different, you know, ages and different textures and it's tastes. it's yeah. fascinating. It's absolutely it's really fascinating. Cool. I'm like so excited to see the magazine. Okay, I like the thing that you did where you put on Instagram. Everyone should choose the front cover. You do that on you did that on Joy of Kosher. Yeah, before, but this was it the really first helps. People, it really people love helps. conversations. Yeah. Yes, yeah, no, the conversation is great. But this was like the first time we were just like really lost yes i wanted i'm just doing, i'm saying it straight up i wanted the raw meat okay. hanging yeah hanging raw meat can you do that what's that you're not doing that one um uh, well you voted no can we see some pictures <laughs> yeah he was voted <laughs> out so i also um, did not love that you know with art scroll with my book when you do a front cover they don't people don't want to see raw meat they they told me that no yeah. raw or so rare my meat is 
almost like I don't care. I want to cause a buzz. <laughs> I want to. I want to go out there with a bang. This was our. But at the end of the day, we do have to be worried what other people think. Right. It's not just about me. But the it's not our own personal magazine yeah, that we're printing for <laughs> like just, just our the, house and, and just me. for us and for you. <laughs> I would. I. I love. But we the had. It was interesting to see. We had a lot of people saying to go with the burger, and then some people were saying like they didn't that the, the the drip on the burger looked bad, or people were saying that a burger doesn't represent flashics. Also, the wording over there, something about an impossible burger. Could we, what, what was the wording that it said? Some, I forgot. Uh, can I just say? And then some people said burgers just for summer, and that was the whole point, actually, of our burger article to say, no, do not cook burgers on your grill. It's not the best way to cook your burger. And so we write the best way to cook your burger inside your house. I'll give the secret, is in a cast iron pan, and that's it. Like, that's the best way to cook your burger, hands down. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna... When you do it on a grill, sometimes they crumble. It doesn't stick 100%. Like, 100%, you want to get that, like, crust on your burger. You want it to be evenly cooked. The best way to do it is indoors. You preheat it. Preheat the cast iron, make it really hot, drizzle some oil, and you put your ground meat inside. Um, slightly seasoned, and that's, like, the best way to cook My it. My mouth is watering. Seriously, <laughs> I know. Friday so, morning. We might have burgers for uh, dinner well, tonight. We have, we have some good new, um, new and old options in Nikoi in five towns these days. Four. Between um, Judd's makes it a <gasps> burger. Yeah. Mike's just reopened. I know my kid, my family went on Sunday night. There was a line out the yeah, door. Sure. There was a line out wow. the door. People him. The people in front of us, in front of them, I wasn't with them, online oh, waited an hour and wow. they still weren't served. So my family left and went to Waktov and had sushi at Waktov. Uh huh. Okay. That's a good alternative. But, yeah, it's a good alternative. It was right down there. But uh, Mike always had, and now we'll continue to have. Good burgers, but we're going to talk restaurants with Ilan in a couple minutes. Okay. Um, Chef and Shlomo, thank you so much for coming in. So much fun. The magazine will be available in stores and at flashix.com. Oh, flashix.com. Good. When 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 are we um, have these magazines First out? First second week of November. It's going to be also be given out at Kosher Fest. Anyone that's coming, um, hopefully will be given out at Nomi's book launch. If yes. She, if, if she lets us. Yes. Yes. It's going to be at the Jewish, um, the Jewish the media. media. Yeah, Jewish great. Me but you don't, media. not everyone's going to both. Oh, okay. So we should definitely p put it into the bags. I'm yeah, like, I'll it's amazing how fast this stuff sold. So uh, it's amazing. amazing how fast, how fast. I, I sold a bunch, like a lot of tickets. I'm selling 150 tickets oh, to the book so launch. And we're fast. like halfway through in like four That's days. Amazing. And just, yeah, for all the people listening, um, these, these book launches, you're paying $75. You're getting a free cookbook. You're Which is getting, worth thirty five dollars. You're getting a dinner and you're getting a bag full of swag right there. I promise you, take out the the dinner is free. Also, it's a it's very fun. it's a very nice and way to go booths. out and enjoy your time. It's like a different way. It's That's different what I'm saying. The, the booze and the experience. food is on the house. We've you, always found these. It's events paying for to be itself really already yeah. with the cookbook and that, all that fun stuff. And you get to meet Naomi. And 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 you guys. So right. yeah, <laughs> we'll talk. I know that you're planning. I don't even have to tell you to come. You know you're coming. You yeah, we just need to get babysitted for like a whole week. A whole week, I know, because it's kosher fest. And if anyone uh, wants to babysit? <laughs> oh, actually, do you want magazine. Gabby? Do you want Gabby to babysit? We can talk. I'm hustling for my daughter Gabby. Oh, okay, awesome. Wait, isn't your kid old enough? What? To come? Yeah, thir no, to no, to babysit. What's the, what's the, my kids what's are in yeshiva. Age? That's no, the issue. thirteen, thirteen. Unbelievable. God, the kids go fast. We had the kids on the show. I don't even think Libra was born yet. No. When we had the but boys had on, the on the show. Also one time. Yeah, he's been on the show. Her, her kids, are, the the client kids are serious foodies. All right. Thanks, Thanks for guys, for us. so much so fun. for coming. Yes, thank you. Um, we must be in touch. Yes, now, I feel like I've come back down to earth. I know, now, now like Yom Tov is out also. And, and like my, books, my book was book, handed. Right. I was too intense for the last yes. like six months. I did not post it on the Kosher Foodie Group in like eight months. Because wow. I didn't have the headspace it's, to yeah. do one more thing. The minute I told uh, Ilan, the minute the book was turned in, I was back. We, we came down to, to your house when you were doing the show. Was it not it normal? Was it's not normal. Crazy. It's not normal. Again, people don't know what goes on behind nah. scenes. I, I, I literally couldn't breathe. I didn't have headspace for anything. I didn't wish any of my friends because the book got turned in the day I landed in Israel. It was still not finished yet when I got to Israel, Matzei Chag. Uh, I bumped into you in, in Costco. You couldn't even talk to me because you were debating about your cover. Yeah, it was, it was not. I didn't have a name yet. You know, that's what we're talking. I did not have the name to the last minute. So like, I'm like, hi, Nomi. She's like, I can't talk. I'm talking to Gedalia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have a name for the book till literally went to print. So um, yeah, that's yeah. the life of print. But it's yeah. good. Baruch Hashem, yeah. and really, we thank everybody who buys our books and magazines and follows us and keeps us going. To I really a lot of appreciation goes out to everyone. So it is not thank unnoted. You. We are acknowledging everyone because you make 
the book sale and the magazines go and the restaurants to eat at. And, exactly. You know, it's amazing. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sad you have to leave. I know. <laughs> We're off to print. We're off to print. Off to print. Literally, they're off to the presses, but we're very excited for them. Um, this is Table for Two with Naomi Nachman on the Nachman Siegel Network. I am having an amazing show. I just had Schiffer and Shalma Klein talk about their brand new magazine, uh, Flashix. It will be on the shelves any minute now. Um, and I have now Ilan Kornblum in the house. Ilan has not been here in it. Close to a year. Yeah, yeah, it's e- been a long time. Every season yeah. we try to get you on. So we, we've... Uh, oh, thank you. You are, thank you, you are back, back in the house. How are back. you? Good, good. I got all dressed up for you. Oh, I, I see the suit. I, we're on radio, but I'm like, all right. But yeah, but you right. know... We have the Do you know, I mean, Kai Luria didn't realize we had a video camera going the whole time I had him recording in Israel. So when I sent him the clip, he's like, oh my God, there was a video? I'm like, yeah. Well, you didn't like... <laughs> No, no, no. Okay, he was fine. amazing, as always. Brief, he's, he's wonderful. Yeah. Um, okay, Ilan, we yeah. have so much to talk about, but can I just say? Sure. Pesach's in like five minutes. Yeah, I was just speaking about uh, <laughs> to, a, to a program operator yesterday. Uh, are you getting settled with getting all that? Getting settled, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's another month this year, which is great, you know, because you have uh, it's end of April. But two are, Adars, two Adars people. Yeah, people are starting to, uh, Friday night to ask me start. questions now. It's a Friday, Friday night, night start, start again. Again, but we like that big holiday. It is. It is. It's. I'm going to throw it's exciting. The year 2021. It will be. I'm, I'm pretty sure about this because I, I I checked it a while ago. I just got to make sure I get the date right. But 2021, I believe, it's going to start on a Matzah Shabbos. They haven't had one in nearly 20 years. Well, it's three day. Uh, three day first days. Wow. Yeah, okay. that's that's pretty intense. Right, so come this year, Pesach, you know. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. So we'll we'll announce uh, very soon where uh, where we're going. Maybe Florida. Nice. Maybe. Fun. We'll see. We'll okay. see. So, uh, lots to talk about. Lots to talk about. You'll yeah. well, you'll come back on and we'll talk about Pesach yeah. in a little bit. But it's just nice that it's actually someone said once said with the crack of the matzah you hear the shofar. I'm the other way round with the with the sound of the shofar you hear the right. crack of the matzah. It's so the, the minute yontif is yontif. over, yeah, for sure. It's it's, it's, a big, um, it's a big trip. So people are already planning. It's, it's, yeah, it's always that uh, people are using their points to buy tickets to fly somewhere. Um, by the way, just a little shout out to get paid. If you have points and want to use them for Pesach, see, I'm tying it all yeah, in. Yeah, Use get, uh, sell your points for vacations or there's a restaurant you want to go to that's not in your state and you want to go to Milts in Chicago, use go your points. Go for a day, you know, go do a, a day crawl. Or go to Chicago, go visit a few restaurants. Come back. People do that, by the way. Yeah. People for shallots, I remember people telling shallots me. Shallots and milts. Yeah. They, they've gone for right, you know, yeah. a great trip in the morning, be back at night. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's a great. It's only a two-hour flight. You can do that to Florida. Yeah. You can do that to uh, – California is a little far, but if you're listening from Chicago, you can just – you're right. halfway. Right. Um, yeah, so they've got some really good restaurants. Um, all right. So let's start. Where are we up to in the foodie world? What oh, is boy. new? Besides, we know we have uh, our farm and dinner, which yeah. when everyone right. hears this, it will be over. But I was there once with Honey Applebaum. I yeah, no, there's amazing – I love fa. Uh, by the way, October is a great month, not just for sports. I was always talk, I'm a big sports fan. <laughs> really? But for, for restaurants, you know, after the holidays are over, that's when everyone's starting to open. That's when everyone is after the renovation. Uh, people are waiting, you know, for the fall menu, for the winter menu. So there's a lot going on. Manhattan, Brooklyn, five towns, uh, always new restaurants opening what up. What about out of New York? And Florida, you know, <sighs> Florida's always. Um, Anywhere I should go eat? So again, by time you okay, so you're going next week. I'm going next week, but I'll so when, when everyone's hearing this, it'll be I'm here right now. Right, so certainly Surfside obviously is Restaurant Row, Harding oh, Avenue. What? When did that happen? A couple of years ago. Yeah, uh, Miami the, Beach is well. Well, number one, Tasty Beach. Yeah, Jeremy people is people love that place. They don't have anything like that in Surfside. Tasty Beach right. is like amazing. I never go to Florida without going to Jeremy at Tasty Beach. It's been there a long time. Yeah, yeah I've been. They've come, people have come and go. They've always remained. Yeah, it's, solid food, and he changes his menu. It's, it's not a, everybody changes yeah. their menu. He changes the menu. Okay, I'm I'm taking notes. Where I should go? So, um, Aventura Fuego is is always a hot ah, spot. I love the Aquinas. Yeah. Nicest so people between on the planet. Surfside and Aventura, uh, even North Miami has a few places. Soho and Grill Time and Soho. Grill Time. I love Soho. Yeah. Oh, their their pad cool thai place. is amazing. I yeah, love. Cool, I love. 
But again, you know, I think Surf Sorry with uh, Harbor Grill and, you know, Backyard Barbecue and Kosh and uh, 26 and you have a new restaurant. You have three new restaurants coming. Oh, where? Right on Harding Avenue. There's a... Um, Will it a be meets- open next week? No, no. Hopefully for the season. Zami Cohen, you better be organizing my food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll let people know. But uh, Florida is always a big um, destination. Even, you know, the season has gone bigger. Summer they did pretty well. Uh, which is which is nice to you see. You know, I want to say thank God the whole Zika yes, thing that, kind of passed. Absolutely, that, that hurt, killed them a couple years ago. Uh, between peace off programs and and kosher restaurants, thank God people are not talking about it, and people are going, and restaurants couldn't be happier. You know what? There's a lot of restaurants that do, doesn't get enough attention. Arizona. I've never been there. But I know seagulls. None. There right? are I think so many great restaurants. 18 is there. Um, 18, Mint, Seagulls. Um, the people from Bravo Pizza have something over there. There's a cafe there. there. I, know, I've no, I haven't been there. Arizona is amazing. You should really like check that. They have a really nice little restaurant scene I going mean, it's, on it's over there. a few there. places I haven't. Like Texas, I haven't been to. <gasps> Wait! He, Yoni's from Texas. I know, I know. There's a few places. Like, I've only I've been gone to San Antonio, so yeah. I, they have a great restaurant. I just go to what Chicago Queens, and, right? and L.A. I just I was I had a whole summer. I don't know if you saw, but I was all over the place in in August. Uh, L.A., Florida, Toronto. Detroit. Toronto, you know, Toronto has a lot of restaurants. I'm actually going uh, early November. I've been there. This will be my third time in about a year because of Chopped Events, and they have some great restaurants. Couple, yeah, I made a trip there just because there was a few restaurants. Ma- Mar- Mar- Maron. Maron, I um, love them. The Pantry. Black, the Pantry. Oh, it's awesome. That's so different. Oh, Very love it. cool. Um, but you have Gladstones that just opened. Prime on Avenue just opened. These are high end places. I'm going to be doing the food crew. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Do it. So there's a lot of places. It keeps me very busy. It's overwhelming, you know. It's, right. It sounds like you have a really cool job, which you do. But I get paid to eat. You get That's paid to cool. eat, the dream job. But, but it's, it's hard work. It, people don't see the hard work it's, behind it. To get it. to that point, listen, I've been doing this 15 years. Uh, I was doing it before Facebook and Instagram ever right. existed, right. taking pictures. Us, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, so it's really something I, I love what I do. Um, Remember, it was you and me that would go to a restaurant without a whole entourage yeah. because there would be like you, maybe you, me, and Melinda would go. Yeah. We'd take some photos, we'd eat, we'd you know maybe put on some pictures on yeah. Facebook, and that was that. It's now come the a group, long way. It's, it's come a long way. It's you know, I started and it was funny because the clients are here. When I started my magazine 15 years ago, there really wasn't anything like that. You know, in terms of kosher restaurants and color. And, and glossy, um, and it was it was great. People loved it. Uh, it was it was a lot of hard work. It kept me very busy. How did you actually start? How, what made you think of this? Do you have so, a marketing background? I was in mark. Yes, in college, I was um, selling my college planners to the college. I was in Brooklyn College. What I did was I took a planner. I bought a planner from you know uh, me to everyone. I went around to the different stores around Brooklyn College. Starting, I put ads into the planner, you know, like schedule of classes, and, and, and I sell, sold those to the college bookstore. And that's how I got started. So Jeez. even as an 18-year-old, I was an entrepreneur going around. Um, Are your kids like you? My oldest, my 10-year-old, starting to kind of Hustle. Get, yeah, she's, she's getting, she likes, you know, going to restaurants and, and coming with me. And I would love to pass on to, to her or to any of my children. So I'm, you know, but now things have changed from 10 years ago. Now everything is so much information. There's so much, everything changes within a week to two weeks. Uh, Menus and chefs and locations and um, closings and openings. So that's why, you know, we saw four years ago, almost, you know, yeah, when uh, we started the group. uh, Is it four years? I was like, one of the, yeah. I think I was one of the first ten people in the group. It was crazy. The, I remember the, it was right many, before Kosher Fest. How many were up to? Up to over forty-eight thousand. So I was like in the first ten, yeah. which is cool. Yeah, <laughs> I remember when it was life was simple. Now it's it, it, you know it's, it's, it's a monster it. that taking life of its own. You know, one of the I've done a lot of really great accomplishments. Baruch Hashem, you know this, and you know what? I wear my foodie of the week. That's right. That I, was fun. I was. We used to give those awards. Foodies, People were. They I want would, a sash. They want a crown. They told their friends. I, it I'm was so fun. Proud. I'm look. 
I've got two cookbooks out and still one of my, my right. finest achievements cool. has been called you know, Foodie like of to, the Week. We like to reward those who go out and, and share. My husband says he should have been Foodie of the Week because he had to pay those credit card right. bills. I went for a week, to, two weeks to Israel. And before he got there, I just ate in a million restaurants and posted it. Yeah. And he's like... Oh, now I know why you won. I just saw the credit card bill. Right, right. <laughs> Again, people, uh, that's why I kind of, that's why the, the group is successful because people like to share their experiences. They like to know what's going on. It's, it's, and it's very organic because you're getting people sharing experiences um, and you're hearing it from them. You know, and, and posting pictures, what they like, what they, you know, what they, uh, what they had. And so people are kind of getting a real sense of, you know, oh, I saw you got that. I'm gonna get this, and of course, everyone's gonna have. Um, not everyone's gonna be exactly the same thing. You know, you might have some slow service one day. You might have something a little off one day, but it happens. But um, overall, you know, people are enjoying restaurants now. It's um, amazing. The, the palate is more educated between the Food Network and social media, and, and people like you um, with cookbooks. I think people love to talk about food. And, and restaurants. It's amazing how how it's really changed and grown, and how sophisticated we've all got. Like with with recipes from my book, people will text, like find me on Instagram and ask me questions about recipes, and I always go, "Did they do this to Susie Fishbine? Right? Like yeah. she did." Well, again, there was back no, then, maybe there was you know, no, maybe by it. her later books. And but can, there wasn't. I can by only imagine what it's going to be like in five, ten years. Right? You yeah, know? it's going to be crazy. Just, yeah, it's it's it's. It's very hard to keep a kosher restaurant open. So you want to see in 10 years who stayed open. Right. Again, right? people talk about all the restaurants that have closed. You know, people are like, oh my God, it's so many restaurants closing, but they don't talk about the ones that have been open for 20. Who, okay. New York. Let's just talk New York because we're sitting in New York. We're sitting on the Lower East Side right in New York City. What is the longest restaurant that's been open? What is, what's out there? Let's all think. So Mr. Broadway. Is considered the longest because they started out with, with Strauss, Arne Strauss, and I did um, a write up for them in the uh, Mishbach yeah? about their history. Yeah, so they, and they've been have had some changes, but in one location they've been pretty much the, the longest. Mr. Broadway, it's about yeah. seventy or eighty years, I think. Again, if you go back to the way the original, they were dairy originally, yeah. and and they kind of phased into the to the meat. Uh, but Mendy's has been around also a, for a long decades. Time. La Marais has La Marais. been around for I remember decades. when La Marais opened, the, what, the f my daughter who's now 24, Simi, so she was about one when we right. went there for the first time. It was a few months old. It's about 23 years old. That's like a thousand years yeah, in the food world. Right. No, for sure. And, and they're still busy. You know, great location. Yeah. It's, Theater district. Right. You, good, you know, good food. Do you remember it's the restaurant? It's not crazy expensive. What was the restaurant before that? I remember. Um, I'll tell you. You tell me. You, you don't. Think? It's a friend. It's also what was it before La Marais it was called David's Harp. It was no, three restaurants. I, I tell you oh, how I'm I know this. You know, I'm a little I younger was, than you, right? No, so just, I, when I was dating, I went there on a date when I first came to America, and it's been wow. twenty-seven years next month. And it was Flashik's Mil Flashik's upstairs, Milchik in the basement, because really? you know there's three floors. And Flashix, Milsic, and Chinese, three restaurants in one building. Wow. And I went there on a date, and that's how Good I. Good memories, right? For a long time, it said David's Harp on the side, and then La Marais replaced it. People love talking about old school restaurants. Like, we just had a thread Sh on Schmuck our group. Yeah, we just had a thread on our group. And we have it like every couple of months where people reminisce about, you know, old rat Ratners and Schmuck of Bernstein. Right and, there. Lurry side. Grand they Deli. They love Grand Deli. They love talking about. What their parents and their grandparents and what it's just that's what food does to us and restaurants. It's that memory of going there and it's just happy occasions and you know good memories and so it's I speak nostalgic. about that. I speak about that in my book. Some of my earliest food memories are eating in a restaurant in Sydney called Benet Brith. Uh -huh. And my parents didn't have a lot of money and like to go out to eat all the time like we do right. here. I mean. Not that I'm saying that we're more money than parents. I, my point was like you didn't go it's, out to eat then. You had right. different priorities. Right. Now people go out to eat to socialize. To socialize. To, yeah. But we, like some of the early, like they had this thing called, it was crumbed mushrooms. I loved it. It was part of a gypsy platter with schnitzel and steak on it. And you order it when you had the whole family together. It came with sparklers and fireworks. And like I always remember the crumb mushrooms. So I wrote a recipe for my book right. based on my happy right. memories from that restaurant yeah. of crumb mushrooms. Mine's crumb zucchinis. Like it's just... The memories that restaurants bring us 
and they, they really last a long time. Mine are like 40 years old there. Because, you know, usually you go to restaurants for birthdays and anniversaries and celebrations. So it's you're always celebrating something. So you have that memory. You have that in your mind. You don't mind. say someone died, let's go out to eat. It happens. <laughs> right. Shiva, we do it at Shivers. We, we do, but we don't do it at a restaurant. <laughs> right. But again, so it's that's what it's a part of our life. Uh, people just love to talk about it. Um, and yeah, it's. Let's talk about restaurant etiquette. Okay. Because I think we talk about that a lot in the group. I, I think we, I think you know, we need to take it out of the group and on the airways because I think it's really important. Okay. okay. Um, in, in terms of people, people should come to a restaurant and know that it's not, especially if it's not fast food. You want to, you're gonna want to sit there for a little bit. It's not just you know, you're not going out just to eat. You're going there to socialize, to talk to the person next to you. Um, so if something doesn't come right away, it's okay. You have to give yourself a couple hours to go out. If you're going to be in a rush, don't go out. Go, or go fast food. Grab a slice of pizza. Or go fast food. Um, but, you know, people are working, whether it's the waiters, whether it's the chefs, they're trying to do a good job. You know, don't snap at them. Don't, um, you know, don't come in with a bad attitude. Go in with something like you're, you know, you want to, you're excited about something. And so... You know, if you have something happens, again, you can do it in a certain way. You can call over the manager, call over the waiter. There's always a way of, of doing it the right way, the proper way. Um, and so, we, you know, we get all these messages from people where you have to wait a long time. I get it. and So people can... People from the group complain to you about a restaurant? Yeah. And, and then you become the advocate? But that's not way. something you want to do. No, right? but it, you know what? It kind of happens. You know, people know me. People know at the group that um, we're not going to allow bashing. It just, it's, I've heard too many stories of the other side where it's not heard, where it's not exactly the way it really happened or was written. So when someone writes something on Facebook or anywhere, it's very one sided because you're only getting one person's view. And you're not getting the other person's view. Right. I mean, it's it's not social media is not a, a court of public opinion where you're going to start fighting it out. You know, you really want to speak to the person, speak to them directly in, in person. So I don't shrug, you know, the the negativity. I don't put it under the rug. I deal with it head on. And so, if someone has constructive criticism, absolutely. Something is salty. Someone waited a little bit. No problem. Write that. Someone's going to say, this is the worst restaurant in the world and don't go back and I had food poisoning, but you really didn't, then that needs to be taken offline. And so people, and I encourage people, message me and I'll get in touch with the owner. We'll, we'll deal with it. If something happened, they'll take care of it. Uh, if there's a, you know, something that's really a bad problem and if it's occurring all the time, then yeah, then I will step in and, and kind of let the restaurant know that this can't happen. But if someone... You know, didn't get their meal right away. They'll explain. Maybe the the sh they got backed up because it was it was a busy week, or maybe someone you know uh, someone just walked in and um, you know some or the chef didn't come in, or it could be a million reasons why something is not happening. If you explain to the person, like okay, now I understand. Usually, I tell people don't post w right after you get home. Wait till the next morning. Digest, you know? literally. Sometimes it makes a Digest big difference. Digest and process. Very important. You know, and kind of because people vent and they want to, they want to get to that restaurant. They want to make that restaurant pay. And you, I had a bad night, so you're gonna have a, you know, so take it easy. You know, kind of sleep on it. You know, the next morning, okay, it wasn't such a, it was a nice meal. Okay, I had to wait a little bit. So. Then, if you have a problem, speak to. By the way, first I I say speak to the restaurant when you're there. But then when they can fix the problem, because when you go home, they're not going to know who your waiter is. They're not going to know what exactly happened. So if you have a problem, speak to them right there and then. And nicely like a man. And nicely. Speak like a man. And usually they will. If, if, and I've dealt with so many owners where they say, you know what? They spoke to me in a nice way. I understand. You know, I feel bad. But someone's going to come waving their finger and they're going to be like, you know, I've been in dozens. I've been in restaurants all over the world and I'm a foodie. And, yeah, don't, you know, yeah, do not say, do you know who I am? Right, right. I know a very big person who's very high up in the food world. I don't want to say what department they fall under, but that person will never give her name because she doesn't want special treatment. Yeah. Again, I, I'm like every restaurant should treat every customer, you know, the same. But again, it's it's a, things happen. It's not a science. Restaurants, it's things you know happen. Again, chefs and waiters and foods and, and there's so many different moving parts we talk about it's like a theater it's like a broadway show right you know it's there's it's so production. many it is and, and we heard from chef and Shlomo, like yeah. what goes behind everything and it's not always exactly the way it is 
the next time, and people have to just understand that. And you deal with it. You want to have a good time. Speak to me. Speak to the owner when you're there. That's kind of the etiquette that that I kind of preach, and I think we've made a change. I think people understand now what it's like. I think the perspective of the owner, yeah, I, I is think getting that out there, and and you know and that, that, that dialogue, that. that dialogue between owner, chef, and customer has changed. Yeah, and, and, and I've seen it within the last yeah. four, four, five years that you. It had. has. It has, and. and that's what, you know, I'm, I'm proud of that. You should have a lot to be proud of. You have probably the biggest kosher. SD Walby's probably right behind you. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> you know, we, thank God we're still over, we're still, I think, the largest kosher food group in the world on, on Facebook. And um, I've got a friend from Australia who lives in Israel who married a French guy. And they came to America, and I said, how do you know where to eat? She goes, yeah, join that food group. Yeah. No, it's cool. <laughs> they have nothing to do with American jury. Like, it's- no, it's just cool. And, and people don't even realize that there's a search button that people search. So, you, you, you know, you're getting so – we have about 500 posts a week. So we're, we're getting people who are even searching, and it's like almost like a kosher Google where you kind of find kosher out – Kosher like, Google. You know, I love that. What people Google. are – Google. Yeah. Google. 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 Right. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot of information out there. You just got to grab it between – our Facebook group and Instagram and our newsletter and so our the name website. Of the, group, the name of the group is? Great Kosher Restaurant Foodies. Very simple. And, so and they have get-togethers and they've had... We have get-togethers. We have contests. We've had people get uh, engaged being on the group. Albert and Rachel. They met on the group? They met on the group. I didn't realize that. Yeah, a lot I'm of people. Friends and, with them. and friends. Again, think about it. How many people have, have kind of gone together because of, of the group? It's really where true. Friends have, have become... I met a ton of people. You know, and you, you kind of... And it's a community of, of, of people. Lee Fisher. Lee Fisher. I was in um, Oxnard, and he, he went like this to me across the room. That's so funny. Called me over, goes, I'm Lee Fisher. I'm like, and it wasn't that long ago. So I posted when I was in California yeah, yeah, yeah. last November. I didn't, so I I didn't know that. So he called me over, I'm Lee Fisher. I'm like, I thought Lee Fisher was a girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's mysterious. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. But like, it's it's it really, it definitely made foodie the term foodie friends real. Yeah. You know, so it's really yeah. nice. Um, do you have a favorite cuisine? I, I know I'm not allowed to ask you favorite restaurant no, you, because you said all my. It's like having who asked right, who my, my favorite children. child is. Like um, I said my that favorite about- cuisine again. It depends on what I'm in the mood for. Sometimes the sushi, pizza. Um, I, I like different cuisine. Like trying, I'm going to this biblical dinner. Uh, Melinda's going. Yeah, or at least it was passed when this yeah, airs. Yeah, yeah. So, you will have gone. Right. So we'll. I'm dying uh, to hear how that went. So we'll post pictures. Um, and I'm going. There's an event that's coming up this Sunday. That's going to be Long Island. It's um, okay, but people will. This will. Have no, passed. no. This is this is coming up. So this is the Sunday what? of the Friday. Okay, so, so tell it's in give a us a date. So it's basically tell, October twenty eighth. Yes, there we. It's, um, it's a kosher food and wine uh, experience in Long Island, Cradle of Aviation. Go to kosherwineexpo.com. dot um, People do not know about this. No, we not. We got a, It's it's like a f- restaurant. We got six restaurants coming: uh, Marani and uh, West Wing. <gasps> And um, Grow and Behold and Eden Walk. Shout three- out to Marani. I love Marani, them. awesome. We've got 300 wines that are going to be displayed and, and served. For $75, you get food and wine all. Um, Fantastic. And it, really, and it goes to Tadaka, right? It goes right? to Tadaka. Yeah, Young Girls of Huntington is, is doing it. So uh, money goes to them. Lovely. I I'm, I wish I would have known about it. I would no, okay. well, we'll, them. You know, we'll promote them now on the air. So you have a couple of days to go to, to buy tickets. And so uh, we're excited. That's three events I'm missing out on. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, it's a lot. Okay, but I'm doing my food call with Zami Cow and through okay. through through the Florida. Go around. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a lot, a lot. Going Anything on. in Orlando that I need to know about? There's a couple of places. Like, Kosher Orlando, Grill. You know what? It's so funny. Orlando does not have a big restaurant scene. There's Kosher couple, Grill. Kosher Grill's there. Kosher Gourmet is there. Um, but it's so seasonal. It's only you know for a couple of months. Right, they get so I'm very going busy. on a lawyer's conference with my husband. Um, so it's in Orlando this right. year. So starting off from Miami, doing a whole bunch of chop competitions, and then I'm meeting him in Orlando. I'm driving yeah. up and meeting him. It and just, you know, again, a couple of places, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. I have to check those out. And there's so many in Miami to eat oh, at. So many everywhere. So many places across the United States. St. Louis has. Who thought St. Louis? They have Louis, great that's Indian a great restaurant. Story, by the way, about St. Louis. I don't. know, You have time to. Just um, there was a guy who's fl- uh, an owner, Sushi Tokyo owner, who was flying from L.A. back to New York. He got into a, a storm, had to fly to St. Louis, spend a Shabbos there. He was sp- speaking to a couple of guys in the area, and they said, you know, why don't you open a restaurant? And he's like, ha, ah. and he did. <gasps> really? He when? Op- 
He's opening up in a couple of months. That's cool. I just did a Isn't whole that write that up. Cool story. I just did a write up for Mishpacha magazine on St. Louis because I ate. I yeah. was there. Yeah. And oh, that's good yes, to know. It's a sushi uh, dairy restaurant. Fantastic! They need that because they have they have Indian, yeah, which is great. We need more kosher Indian restaurants in. Yeah, we do. Stanford has. We don't have one. one in New York. Yeah, you have we to go to Stanford. Yeah, you yeah. have to go to Stanford. But really, in Indian, in which you know, I've been now all I over know. India. <laughs> We've had our own chefs. Daniel Lass was our chef right. on the tour, so he whipped up fabulous right, food right. for us. Um, okay, this is it. Yoni is giving me the thumbs up. Naomi, wrap it up, lady. Ilan, it's not half an hour flight. I know. It's, it's not speak, normal. We always say this, hours. An hour. Well, we, and we're going to continue. We're going out to eat. Yeah, we're going out to eat. No gas. I'm starving. Okay. Everyone, thank you so much for listening. We have music sponsored by our friends at Kedem right up until Lich Benching. want to wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom. This is Table for Two with Naomi Nachman on the Nachman Seagull Network. Shabbat Shalom.